Well, it's Tuesday. That is. And we're messing around with our toys in the attic. We have toy bats in our belfry and toys in our attic. And something in a box here I find very unusual. The box art itself is sort of strange. Mm -hmm. um, because the locomotive's kind of all over to one side and it's photographed from a funny angle. But it's neat. This is actually a really neat kit. This particular locomotive has been modeled so many times in so many scales and mm. offered in HO and as uh, museum models and stuff because it's one of the most famous locomotives that was ever built. And uh, we've seen, I can't say the original, but one of the originals. Mm -hmm. This is George Stevenson's Rocket from 1829, uh, wildly heralded as uh, the world's first passenger locomotive but wow. uh, uh, starting in 1796 the the very very latter 18th century uh, they started building steam locomotives oh. and for the next 25 years they really didn't work at all and then in about 1825 they started figuring out how to make these things work mm. and bit by bit more and more of uh, steam locomotives the reason I say that we've seen sort of this engine is uh, Stevenson built several. Wow. Once, uh, once this just really took off for him and uh, uh, put him and his locomotive company, if you will, on the map, mm -hmm. he built, uh, I, I'm not sure the exact number, something like six of these. Wow. And uh, they were in England, um, uh, Great Britain, the United Kingdom. Um, and uh, one of them has found its way to the States, yes. and it's in the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that, that we have seen. Right. And it's there on display next to the big HO layout, which mm -hmm. is so impressive. Anyway, really, really neat engine. Uh, one of the very first successful steam engines from that very, very early era. As much as I like really, really early engines, the really, really early engines, I mean, by the Civil War, they, they had it down to a science. But these pre-Civil War, 1825 to 1830, 1840, uh, those are some knobby engines. And we wow. saw a whole bunch of these when we were in Baltimore mm -hmm. at the B&O Museum. No kidding. For the most part, recreations of the originals. Mm -hmm. But, boy, those real early engines are... They're we just, need to get back out there. We do. Mm. We do. Um, lately, uh, Baltimore has been called a crappy city. It's a beautiful city, and they have one of the most amazing a lot museums. Of history there, too. It's, oh, it's a beautiful city right. and a beautiful museum. Exactly. And nice people. Exactly. So uh, that's a great, great museum. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they don't have this engine. This one's in Chicago. In Chicago. One of these is in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But I've always wanted to build this up, which is why I bought it. Right. Like so many kits, I've just never gotten around to it. Oh, we better I get at it. I paid 12 bucks $12. for it. <laughs> and I don't know what they go for now. I haven't priced them because, well, I've got one. But clear back in the day, I paid Long them. before they start putting 12, barcodes on things. 12 bucks for it. That's you may notice it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, it took me a while to figure out, but the rails on here, there's like little scallops between oh. the, the ties. Huh. And it's like, why would there be little scallops between the ties? And, you know, because rail was just rolled. Back back at this era, they really didn't even know how to make the rail. No. And a lot of these real early trains run on little short sections of rail that just the individual cast iron sections sat between the ties and then those kind of interlocked. So. Hmm. We're talking real different, real, yes. real. Well, the ties early, are just a log stuff. sliced and, in half, and they're not even sliced in half. Oh. They're just logs buried. Oh wow! Right. So. Uh, um, oh man. But this, yeah, it ran in, in Great Britain, and I believe it was involved in one of those great competitions that they used to have back then mm. uh, to see who could build the better locomotive, and right. Stevenson built the better locomotive. Nice. And, well, that's and cool. So the competition was called the Rainhill Trials, and the goal was to find a suitable locomotive for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. So this is an early version of uh, one of Stevenson's rocket designs 
Notice that the stack is right on top of the firebox. Oh. And uh, you wouldn't think that would be a very efficient design. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> yeah, and then the boiler is just uh, in front of that. So the rocket's big claim to fame was that Stevenson moved the stack to the front of the engine. Firebox is still at the back. And then he put flues running through the boiler fire tubes. Nice. Through the water. Much more efficient design. So there were five different locomotives at the Rainhill Trials. Two of them were like this one with a vertical boiler. In a vertical boiler, the fire is at the bottom of the boiler and the stack runs straight up through the water. And then one of the designs was that same configuration where the stack and the firebox door are at the back. Just looks kind of goofy. And uh, one of the designs was, uh, well, let's say the fuel, <laughs> the fuel efficient design. Horsepower. Horsepower, yes. Now, now this thing used very little coal, in uh, fact none, and, and very little water. I would think it would need water. It would need some water, <laughs> but not, not as much as a boiler. Nothing like a thirsty horse. And then, of course, there was Stevenson's rocket, uh, which uh, was the only locomotive that even completed the trials. <laughs> Uh, the horse ran away. I think he got a job over at Ford. Oh, I think you're right. <laughs> anyway, Stevenson's design became legendary. Of course, the railroad adopted this design, and they built many locomotives quite similar to this for the railroad. The original was preserved, and it's actually in a museum, even as we speak. That's neat. And Stevenson went on to build uh, several replicas of it. And one of those replicas is at the Ford Museum. I knew it. Now the guy on the left here built this replica of the rocket. This is Buster Keaton, and he used it in a film. And that's actually his dad, Joe Keaton, who played the locomotive engineer in the film. So he got his dad a job? I guess so. Anyway, the film was called Our Hospitality. Oh. It's really a funny, <laughs> funny film, but it has a great scene in there, a couple of scenes featuring this train. Now, of course, Keaton is much better known for his other train movies, uh, most uh, generally The General. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In this case, he dressed up a 440 as the famous Civil War locomotive, The General. It's well known that a lot of these silent uh, actors couldn't make the jump to soundies because they had terrible voices. I think he was a little horse. I think this is the son of the horse that got the job over at Ford. I think so. <laughs> uh, but we digress. In, in the film, Keaton's rocket has to navigate some of the most unlikely track work anyone's ever seen. Surprisingly, it does. It, it, it didn't derail on camera anyway. I'm sure there were plenty of derailments because the track work here was just a disaster. Uh. <laughs> here the rail is laid over a fallen tree. <laughs> yes. I'm willing to bet Joe Keaton had back problems after this film was I would made. imagine. <laughs> Keaton even went to the trouble of recreating the same passenger cars. Keaton's reproduction was used in yet another film called Iron Mule, and then, unfortunately, it got scrapped out. Well, that's unfortunate. It's sad. So, anyway, that's a really cool kit. Uh, and, again, there's so many different variations on this mm. model. You can buy it many scales, and you can buy operational ones, and wow. O scale, HO scale, and, and whatever. Because it's such a famous it engine. It is. But this is, this is a really great kit that that builds up into 126 scale. So it's uh, it's pretty good size, and that makes it the same scale roughly as the General mm -hmm. and some of these other plastic models of, of steam locomotives. So you could do like a whole collection of, uh, right. of uh, approximately half inch scale steam locomotives of these real early famous engines. <laughs> very, very cool. Well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here's your opportunity. Here we go. Are you ready for it? Zoom. If you click on the blue button, you will be a subscriber. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday as we drive around a bit. We'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>